Section 36 of Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 2. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Todd Albrick. Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 2, Section 36. Excerpts from Orlando Furioso by Ludovico Ariosto. The Friendship of Medoro and Cloridane From Orlando Furioso, Cantos 18 and 19 Two moors among the Paynim army were, from stock obscure in Tolomita grown, of whom the story and example rare of constant love is worthy to be known. Medor and Cloridane were named the pair, who, whether fortune pleased to smile or frown, served Dardinello with fidelity, and late with him to France had crossed the sea. Of nimble frame and strong was Cloridane, throughout his life a follower of the chase. A cheek of white suffused with crimson grain, Medoro had in youth a pleasing grace. Nor bound on that emprise mid all the train was there a fairer or more jocund face. Crisp hair he had of gold and jet-black eyes, and seemed an angel lighted from the skies. These two were posted on a rampart's height, with more to guard the encampment from surprise, when mid the equal intervals at night Medoro gazed on heaven with sleepy eyes. In all his talk the stripling woeful wight here cannot choose but of his lord devise the royal Dardanelle, and evermore him left unhonoured on the field deplore. Then turning to his mate, cries, Cloridane, I cannot tell thee what a cause of woe it is to me, my lord, upon the plain should lie, unworthy food for wolf or crow. Thinking how still to me he was humane, meseems if in his honour I forego this life of mine, for favour so immense I shall but make a feeble recompense. That he may not lack sepulture, will I go forth and seek him out among the slain, and haply god may will that none shall spy where charles's camp lies hushed do thou remain that if my death be written in the sky thou mayst the deed be able to explain so that if fortune foils so far a feat the world through fame my loving heart may weet amazed was cloridane a child should show such heart such love and such fair loyalty and fain would make the youth his thought forego whom he held passing dear, but fruitlessly, would move his steadfast purpose, for such woe will neither comforted nor altered be. Medoro is disposed to meet his doom, or to enclose his master in the tomb. Seeing that naught would bend him, naught would move, I too will go, was Cloridane's reply, in such a glorious act myself will prove, as well such famous death I covet I. What other thing is left me here above, deprived of thee, Medoro mine? To die with thee in arms is better on the plain than afterwards of grief shouldst thou be slain. And thus resolved, disposing in their place their guards' relief, depart the youthful pair, leave Foss and Palisade, and in small space are among ours who watch with little care, who, for they little fear the pain him race, slumber with fires extinguished everywhere mid carriages and arms they lie supine up to the eyes immersed in sleep and wine a moment cloridano stopped and cried not to be lost or opportunities this troop by whom my master's blood was shed midoro ought not i to sacrifice do thou lest any one this way be led watch everywhere about with ears and eyes for a wide array amid the hostile horde i offer here to make thee with my sword so said he and his talk cut quickly short coming where learned alpheus slumbered nigh who had the year before sought charles's court in medicine magic and astrology well versed but now in art found small support or rather found that it was all a lie he had foreseen that he his long-drawn life should finish on the bosom of his wife. And now the Saracen, with wary view, had pierced his weasand with the pointed sword. For others he near the diviner slew, nor gave the wretches time to say a word. 
Sir Turpin in his story tells not who, and time has of their names a faced record. Paladon of Moncalier, next he speeds, one who securely sleeps between two steeds. Rearing the insidious blade, the pair are near the place where round King Charles's pavilion are tented warlike paladin and peer, guarding the side that each is camped upon, when in good time the paynims backward steer, and sheathe their swords the impious slaughter done. Deeming impossible in such a number, but they must light on one who does not slumber, and though they might escape well charged with prey, to save themselves they think sufficient gain. Thither by what he deems the safest way, Midoro following him, went Cloridane, where in the field mid bow and falchion lay, and shield and spear, in pool of purple stain, wealthy and poor, the king and vassal's course, and overthrown the rider and his horse. The silvery splendor glistened yet more clear, there where renowned Almonte's son lay dead. Faithful Medoro mourned his master dear, who well agnized the quartering white and red, with visage bathed in many a bitter tear, for he a reel from either eyelid shed, and piteous act and moan that must have whist the winds his melancholy plaint to list. But with a voice suppressed, not that he aught regards if any one the noise should hear, because he of his life takes any thought of which loath burden he would fain be clear. But lest his being heard should bring to naught the pious purpose which has brought him here, the youths the king upon their shoulders stowed, and so between themselves divide the load. Hurrying their steps, they hastened as they might under the cherished burden they conveyed, and now approaching was the Lord of Light to sweep from heaven the stars, from earth the shade, when good Zerbino, whose valiant sprite was ne'er in time of need by sleep down weighed, from chasing moors all night his homeward way, was taking to the camp at dawn of day. He has with him some horsemen in his train, that from afar the two companions spy. Expecting thus some spoil or prize to gain, they every one toward that quarter high. Brother behooves us, cried young Cloridane, to cast away the load we bear and fly. For twere a foolish thought, might well be said, to lose two living men to save one dead. And dropped the burden weaning his Medoro, had done the same by it upon his side. But that poor boy who loved his master more, his shoulders to the weight alone applied, Cloridane hurrying with all haste before, deeming him close behind him or beside. Who did he know his danger him to save? A thousand deaths instead of one would brave. The closest path amid the forest grey to save himself pursued the youth forlorn. But all his schemes were marred by the delay of that sore weight upon his shoulders borne. The place he knew not and mistook the way, and hid himself again in sheltering thorn. Secure and distant was his mate, that through the greenwood shade with lighter shoulders flew. So far was Cloridane advanced before, he heard the boy no longer in the wind. But when he marked the absence of Medor, it seemed as if his heart was left behind. Ah, how was I so negligent, the more exclaimed, so far beside myself and blind, that I, Medoro, should without thee fare, nor know when I deserted thee or where. So saying in the wood he disappears, plunging into the maze with hurried pace, and thither whence he lately issued steers, and desperate of death returns in trace. Cries in the tread of steeds this while he hears, and word and threat of foemen as in chase. Lastly, Medoro by his voice is known, disarmed on foot mid many horse alone. A hundred horsemen who the youth surround, Zerbrino leads and bids his followers seize, the stripling like a top the boy turns round, and keeps him as he can among the trees. Behind oak, elm, beech, ash he takes his ground, nor from the cherished load his shoulders freeze. Wearied at length the burden he bestowed upon the grass and stalked about his load, as in her rocky cavern the she-bear, with whom close warfare alpines hunters wage, 
uncertain hangs about her shaggy care and growls in mingled sound of love and rage to unsheath her claws and blood her tushes bear would natural hate and wrath the beast engage love softens her and bids from strife retire and for her offspring watch amid her ire cloridane who to aid him knows not how and with medora willingly would die but who would not for his death this being forego until more foes than should one lifeless lie ambushed his sharpest arrow to his bow fits and directs it with so true an eye the feathered weapon bores a scotchman's brain and lays the warrior dead upon the plain together all the others of the band turn thither whence was shot the murderous reed meanwhile he launched another from his stand that a new foe might by the weapon bleed whom while he made of this and that demand and loudly questioned who had done the deed the arrow reached transfixed the wretch's throat and cut his question short in middle note there be no captain of those horse no more can at the piteous sight his wrath refrain in furious heat he springs upon medore exclaiming thou of this shalt bear the pain one hand he in his locks of golden ore and wreaths and drags him to himself amain but as his eyes that beauteous face survey takes pity on the boy and does not slay to him the stripling turns with suppliant cry and by thy god sir knight exclaims i pray be not so passing cruel nor deny that i in earth my honoured king may lay no other grace i supplicate nor i this for the love of life believe me say so much no longer space of life i crave as may suffice to give my lord a grave and if you needs must feed the beast and bird like theban crayon let their worst be done upon these limbs so that by me interred in earth be those of good almonte's son may doro thus his suit with grace preferred and words to move a mountain and so one upon zerbino's mood to kindness turned with love and pity he all overburned this while a churlish horseman of the band who little deference for his lord confessed his lance uplifting wounded overhand the unhappy suppliant in his dainty breast zerbino who the cruel action scanned was deeply stirred the rather that oppressed and livid with the blow the churl had sped medoro fell as he was wholly dead the scots pursue their chief who pricks before through the deep wood inspired by high disdain when he has left the one and the other more this dead that scarce alive upon the plain there for a mighty space lay young medor sprouting his life-blood from so large a vein he would have perished but that thither made a stranger as it chanced to lend him aid end of canto eighteen the saving of medoro from orlando furioso canto nineteen by chance arrived a damsel at the place who was though mean and rustic was her ware of royal presence and of beauteous face and lofty manners sagely debonair her have i left unsung so long a space that you will hardly recognize the fair angelica in her if no not scan the lofty daughter of cathay's great can angelica when she had won again the ring brunello had from her conveyed so waxed in stubborn pride and hot disdain she seemed to scorn this ample world and strayed alone and held as cheap each living swain although amid the best by fame arrayed nor brooked she to remember a gallant in cant orlando or king sacripant and above every other deed repented that good ronaldo she had loved of yore and that to look so low she had consented as by such choice dishonoured grieved her sore love hearing this such arrogance resented and would the damsel's pride endure no more where young medoro lay he took his stand and waited her with bow and shaft in hand when fair angelica the stripling spies nigh hurt to death in that disastrous fray who for his king that there unsheltered lies 
more sad than for his own misfortune lay she feels new pity in her bosom rise which makes its entry into unwonted way touched was her naughty heart once hard and cursed and more when he his piteous tale rehearsed and calling back to memory her art for she in ind had learned chirurgy since it appears such studies in that part worthy of praise and fame are held to be and as an heirloom sires to sons impart with little aid of books the mystery disposed herself to work with simples juice till she in him should healthier life produce and recollects an herb had caught her sight in passing thither on a pleasant plain what whether dittany or pansy height i know not fraught with virtue to restrain the crimson blood forthwelling and of might to sheathe each perilous and piercing pain she found it near and having pulled the weed returned to seek medoro on the mead returning she upon a swain did light who was on horseback passing through the wood strayed from the lowing herd the rustic white a heifer missing for two days pursued him she with her conducted where the might of the faint youth was ebbing with his blood which had the ground about so deeply dyed life was nigh wasted with the gushing tide angelica alights upon the ground and he her rustic comrade at her best she hastened twixt two stones the herb to pound then took it and the healing juice expressed with this did she forment the stripling's wound and even to his lips his waist and breast and with such virtue was the salve endued it stanched his life-blood and his strength renewed and into him infused such force again that he could mount the horse the swain conveyed but good medoro would not leave the plain till he in earth had seen his master laid he with the monarch buried cloridane and after followed whither pleased the maid who was to stay with him by pity led beneath the courteous shepherd's humble shed nor would the damsel quit the lowly pile so she esteemed the youth till he was sound such pity first she felt when him erewhile she saw outstretched and bleeding on the ground touched by his mien and manners next a file she felt corrode her heart with secret wound she felt corrode her heart and with desire by little and by little warmed took fire the shepherd dwelt between two mountains hoar in goodly cabin in the greenwood shade with wife and children in short time before the brand new shed had builded in the glade here of his grisly wound the youthful moor was briefly healed by the catayan maid but who in briefer space a sorer smart than young medoro's suffered at her heart note she pines for love of him and at length makes her love known they solemnize their marriage and remain a month there with great happiness End note. amid such pleasures where with tree or groan ran stream or bubbling fountains waved its spin on bark or rock if yielding where the stone the knife was straight at work or ready pin and there without in thousand places lone and in as many places graved within medoro and angelica were traced in divers ciphers quaintly interlaced when she believed they had prolonged their stay more than enow the damsel made design in india to revisit her cathay and with its crown medoro's head entwine she had upon her wrist an armlet gay with costly gems in witness and in sign of love to her by count orlando born and which the damsel for long time had worn no love which to the paladin she bears but that it costly is and wrought with care this to angelica so much endears that never more esteemed was matter rare this she suffered in the isle of tears i know not by what privilege to wear when naked to the whale exposed for food by that inhospitable race and rude she not possessing wherewithal to pay the kindly couple's hospitality served by them in their cabin from the day she there was lodged with such fidelity unfastened from her arm the bracelet gay and bade them keep it for her memory 
departing hence the lovers climb the side of hills which fertile france from spain divide end of canto nineteen the madness of orlando from orlando furioso canto twenty three the coarse and pathless woods which without rain the tartar's charger had pursued astray made roland for two days with fruitless pain follow him without tidings of his way orlando reached a rill of crystal vein on either bank of which a meadow lay which stained with native hues and rich he sees and dotted o'er with fair and many trees the midday fervour made the shelter sweet to hardy herd as well as naked swain so that orlando well beneath the heat some deal might wince oppressed with plate and chain he entered for repose the cool retreat and found it the abode of grief and pain and place of sojourn more accursed and fell on that unhappy day than tongue can tell turning him round he there on many a tree beheld engraved upon the woody shore what as the writing of his deity he knew as soon as he had marked the lore this was a place of those described by me whither oft times attended by medore from the near shepherd's cot had wont to stray the beauteous lady sovereign of cathay in a hundred knots amid these green abodes in a hundred parts their ciphered names are dight whose many letters are so many goads which love has in his bleeding heart corpite he would discredit in a thousand modes that which he credits in his own despite and would perforce persuade himself that rhymed other angelica than his had signed and yet i know these characters he cried of which i have so many read and seen by her may this medoro be belied and me she figured in the name may mean feeding on such like fantasies beside the real truth did sad orlando lean upon the empty hope though ill contended which he by self-illusions had fomented but stirred and i rekindled it the more that he to quench the ill suspicion wrought like the incautious bird by fowler's lore hampered in net or lime which in the thought to free its tangled pinions and to soar by struggling is but more securely caught orlando passes thither where a mountain o'erhangs in guise of arch the crystal fountain here from his horse the souring county lit and at the entrance of the grot surveyed a cloud of words which seemed but newly writ and which the young medoro's hand had made on the great pleasure he had known in it this sentence he in verses had arrayed which to his tongue i deem might make pretence to polished phrase and such in ours the sense gay plants greed herbage rill of limpid vein and grateful with cool shade thou gloomy cave where oft by many wooed with fruitless pain beauteous angelica the child of grave king galifron within my arms has lain for the convenient harbourage you gave i poor medoro can but in my lays as recompense for ever sing your praise and any loving lord devoutly pray damsel and cavalier and every one whom choice or fortune hither shall convey stranger or native to this crystal run shade caverned rock and grass and plants to say benignant be to you the fostering sun and moon and may the choir of nymphs provide that never swain his flock may hither guide in arabic was writ the blessing said known to orlando like the latin tongue who versed in many languages best read was in this speech which oftentimes from wrong and injury and shame had saved his head what time he roved the saracens among but let him boast not of its former boot or balanced by the present bitter fruit three times and four and six the lines impressed upon the stone that wretch perused in vain seeking other sense than was expressed and ever saw the thing more clear and plain and all the while within his troubled breast he felt an icy hand his heart core strain with mind and eyes close fastened on the block at length he stood not differing from the rock then well nigh lost all feeling so a prey holy was he to that o'ermastering woe this is a pang believe the experienced say of him who speaks which does all griefs outgo his pride had from his forehead passed away his chin had fallen upon his breast below nor found he so grief barred each natural vent 
moisture for tears or utterance for lament stifled within the impetuous sorrow stays which would too quickly issue so to abide water is seen imprisoned in the vase whose neck is narrow and whose swell is wide what time when one turns up the inverted base toward the mouth so haste the hurrying tide and in the strait encounters such a stop it scarcely works a passage drop by drop he somewhat to himself returned and thought how possibly the thing might be untrue that some one so he hoped desired and sought to think his lady would with shame pursue or with such weight of jealousy had wrought to whelm his reason as should him undo and that he whosoe'er the thing had planned had counterfeited passing well her hand with such vain hope he sought himself to cheat and man some deal his spirits and awoke then pressed the faithful brigliadoro seat as on the sun's retreat his sister broke not far the warrior had pursued his beat ere eddying from a roof he saw the smoke heard noise of dog and kine a farm espied and thitherward in quest of lodging hide languid he lit and left his brigliador to a discreet attendant one undressed his limbs one doffed the golden spurs he wore one bore off to clean his iron vest this was the homestead where the young medor lay wounded and was here supremely blessed orlando here with other food unfed having supped full of sorrow sought his bed little availed the count his self-deceit for there was one who spake of it unsought the shepherd swain who to allay the heat with which he saw his guest so troubled thought the tale which he was wanted to repeat of the two lovers to each listener taught a history which many loved to hear he now without reserve gan tell the peer how at angelica's persuasive prayer he to his farm had carried young medor grievously wounded with an arrow where in little space she healed the angry sore but while she exercised this pious care love in her heart the lady wounded more and kindled from small sparks so fierce a fire she burnt all over restless with desire nor thinking she of mightiest king was born who ruled in the east nor of her heritage forced by too puissant love had thought no scorn to be the consort of a poor foot page his story done to them in proof was born the gem which in reward for harbourage to her extended in that kind abode angelica at parting had bestowed in him forthwith such deadly hatred breed that bed that house that swain he will not stay till the morn break or till the dawn succeed whose twilight goes before approaching day in haste orlando takes his arms and steed and to the deepest greenwood wends his way and when assured that he is there alone gives utterance to his grief and shriek and groan never from tears never from sorrowing he paused nor found he peace by night or day he fled from town in forest harbouring and in the open air on hard earth lay he marvelled at himself how such a spring of water from his eyes could stream away and breath was for so many sobs supplied and thus oft times amid his mourning cried i am not am not what i seem to sight what roland was is dead and underground slain by that most ungrateful lady's spite whose faithlessness inflicted such a wound divided from the flesh i am his sprite which in this hell tormented walks its round to be but in its shadow left above a warning to all such as trust in love all night about the forest roved the count and at the break of daily light was brought by his unhappy fortune to the font where his inscription young medoro wrought to see his wrongs inscribed upon that mount inflamed his fury so in him was naught but turned to hatred frenzy rage and spite nor paused he more but bared his falchion bright cleft through the writing in the solid block into the sky in tiny fragments sped woe worth each sapling and that caverned rock where medor and angelica were read so scathed that they to shepherd or to flock thenceforth shall never furnish shade or bed and that sweet fountain late so clear and pure from such tempestuous wrath was ill secure so fierce his rage so fierce his fury grew that all obscured remained the warrior sprite nor for forgetfulness his sword he drew or wondrous deeds i trow had wrought the night but neither this nor bill nor axe to hew was needed by orlando's peerless might 
he of his prowess gave high proofs and full who a tall pine uprooted at a pole he many others with as little let as fennel walwort stem or dill uptore and elex knotted oak and fir upset and beech and mountain ash and elm tree hoar he did what fowler ere he spreads his net does to prepare the champagne for his lore by stubble rush and nettle stalk and broke like these old sturdy trees and stem of oak the shepherd swains who hear the tumult nigh leaving their flocks beneath the greenwood tree some here some there across the forest high and hurry thither all the cause to see but i have reached such point my history if i o'erpass this bound may irksome be and i my story will delay to end rather than by my tediousness offend End of section 36 Recording by Todd Albrick